evening, Jesus Image Church. I'd love to welcome those watching online. Let's just all turn our attention to Jesus. Lord, we humble ourselves as we come into your presence tonight, Lord. We come hungry, Lord. We come lowly, Jesus. May we be like little children, humble little children, God, that you bring into the midst where you are, Lord. So we look to you tonight, Jesus. You are our desire, Lord. You're all that we want, Lord. We're here for you, God, in Jesus' name, amen.
We just begin singing in the spirit all over the room. Come on, choir, just sing in the spirit. Mm. Every voice, every voice, every voice. Keep singing, keep singing. That's it, keep singing, keep singing.
Don't stop, choir, don't stop, don't stop. Till fin the yard, man, the end, okay, that's it, that's it. Holy, 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 holy. Till fin the yard, man, the yard, man, the yard. Blessed, blessed, blessed be your name. Kintiel fendior, mundior, bokantiel fendior, mikel. Just for a few moments, would you just close your eyes and forget about everything? Just forget about everything. Everything you walked in with, Jesus knows our needs. Just even forget about your needs for a few moments. Look straight to the face of the Lord and just begin to bless Him. Holy, 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 holy. Holy, 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 holy. Kinti el fekenti or mokenti. We 
Every voice it reaches. It reaches to the highest mountain, and it flows to the lowest valley. The blood. That gives me strength from day to day. It will never lose its power. It reaches. Choir, lift it just a little. It reaches. It reaches to the heart. Sing at church, come on. And it flows to the lowest valley. It's the blood. It's the blood that gives me strength from day. That again, it reaches, it reaches. Lifted choir a little. And it reaches to the highest mountain. And it flows to the lowest valley. Sing it again in faith. It reaches every voice. And it reaches to the highest mountain. Bless you, Lord. And it flows to the lowest valley. Yeah. It's the 
Let that river flow a little bit and minister to the Lord.
pick up that pad a little. Blessed are you, Lord. Just make melodies in your heart. Make melodies. Some of you, it's been a while since you've just been in His presence. Just offer yourself tonight as a living sacrifice and let the beauty of His presence just wash over you. Close your eyes and worship Him. Don't look at us. Let go, let go, let go, let go. Just yield, yield your body, yield your heart, your plans. We've come to adore you, Lord. This is your house. this so strongly it's been so long for some of you just let go
There's a river. There is a river that flows from deep within. And there is a fountain that frees the soul from sin. So come to this water. a river. my cup, Lord, offer your life now.
just begin to tell him what he means to you. Begin to thank him for his mercies toward us. Thank you, Lord. I feel the power of the Spirit Keep thanking him, everyone. Thank you, Lord. Everyone at the altar is 25 or under, and I feel something special for them. If you're on our team or on the worship team, any presence group leaders, I want you to be getting your hands on these young people, if you would. This is really, really sacred, very important right now. I feel this so strongly. And if you, could we all stand just for a moment? I, I feel like we're supposed to give honor to this moment for these young people. You, stand, you can stay where you're at if you'd like, if you're up front. But I want you to stretch your hands out there in the crowd towards, these, towards this next generation of worshipers. Worship is never a waste of time. And I, could you just begin praying in the spirit as you stretch your hands towards them? Out loud, would you lift your voice? Praise you, Lord. Choir, would you pray in the spirit? Father, we thank you, Lord. You do not despise our youth. And we pray now that the power of the Holy Spirit would begin to fall on these young people, Lord, tangibly. Tonight would be a night they'd never forget, that they would remember this moment in this spot, that your power and your presence would come upon them in a very real way. God, guys, come on, I, I feel this strongly. I think we've only done this one other time in of just a few years. Would you just lift your voice? Lift your voice, church, come on. Choir, could you, help, could you give me a little more and just pray in the spirit? Lord, let your power, let the power of the Holy Spirit mark them as you marked us. Thank you, Lord. Touch them deeply tonight. I pray, Lord, for holy encounters with the love of God you'd come in your fire tonight and mark them that you would mark them tonight keep praying keep praying mark them Amy are you here? Come up, please. Keep praying, keep praying. Let their hearts burn. Would you pray? Keep praying in the Spirit. Choir, just keep Jesus, singing in the you, Spirit. Would you mark this generation? Lord, would you mark these young ones, God? Would you mark these young ones, Lord? Would you touch them, Jesus? Lord, like how Jacob wrestled with you, that they would be limp, they would have a limp for you, Jesus. They would be so marked for you, so undone. Lord, I declare hearts of Mary's tonight, right now, that they will go after the one thing 
not anything else but the one thing, Jesus. Purify them, Lord, purify their hearts, purify their eyes and their ears, Lord. Protect them from this world. Jesus, make them Mary's before you. Mary's before you. The hunger, Lord, I just pray for more hunger, that they can't get enough, that the more that they eat, the more that they're hungry, the more that they drink, the more that they drink, the more they thirst for you, Jesus. Father, would you touch them, Jesus? Thank you, Jesus. They would be the next generation to call forth Jesus. That they, that we will learn from them, Jesus. That we wanna burn more, Lord, that we will be hungry because of their hunger. Come on, church, that we will be hungry because of their hunger, Lord. Let them be the fiery ones that light up this generation, that light up this world for the gospel, that light up this world, Jesus. Thank you for the hearts, the missional hearts, Lord, to go across the nation and proclaim Jesus. Set them ablaze tonight, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. A few, um, I think it was yesterday or the day before, Kim sent a text. She said, Skylar and I want to come and worship with you all. And I said, that's wonderful. And when I got up here, I began to think about uh, the first time I heard Kim minister to the Lord as she talked about an encounter with the love of God. And it so marked so many of us. And I believe the Lord sent her here tonight to pray that over this generation, there's simply no substitute for a one-on-one -on -one encounter with Jesus. So I want us all, even if you're over 25, like me, <laughs> I want us all to come hungry right now. Let's, let's pull on the heart of Jesus and ask him for more. Kim, just release whatever you want. Jesus, I ask that there would be a fire of yes, purity yes, that Lord. would burn in our hearts. Yes, Lord. That there would be a steadfastness and holiness to be set apart for you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. That we would know, that we know, that we know that worship is yours alone. Yes. That it belongs to you, Amen. to you alone, Jesus. That our hearts would be set on you the one thing, the one. And God, I ask that in our hearts, we be so filled with love for your church. Yeah. That as worshipers, that we would love your church, that we would love the people, God. And God, I ask that in that you would fill us up with your love, your love that overflows, your love that fills us up, your love that drives out every bit of fear, that we'd be so full of courage and boldness to stay the course and walk the path. When the world says it's got to be one way, that we would know that there are strategies in the kingdom. There are heavenly things that we can grab hold of and walk in. There's no small compromises. There's only compromises. And Lord, let us be resolute, God, in following you and saying the course of what you have called and created us to do. And God, right now, let every heart in this room just catch a fire of your love that would not burn out, that would not grow dim, that God, we would fall more and more in love with you, that our eyes would be set on you, that it would change our lives, it would change our homes, it would change our families, God. Lord, that that love would just leak out of us everywhere we go, that there'd be a fragrance of love around us, God, of your presence that we walk in, God. God, let our ears hear you, let our eyes see you, and let our hearts be so awakened to your love tonight, Jesus. Jesus, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.
No, I got saved right here, right where you're standing in 1989. Got healed right where the cross is. May the Lord brand you tonight. May he brand all of us. May, may none of us come assuming that we've seen it all and had it all. Can we just lift our hands to the Lord? Father, we, we are hungry. Your word says, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Keep us needy, needy and lowly. To receive our worship tonight and be loved, Jesus. We want you to feel our love and know it and fill us with your holy love. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. From hearts filled with gratitude, can we just look up to heaven and offer the Lord just a sacrificial praise? Can we do that tonight? We love you, Lord. Can we lift just one more? Come on, from the depths of our hearts. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Can we lift one more? Come on.
All right, bless his name. Come on, one more time. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. <laughs> Y'all, uh, <laughs> this is the hardest church to pastor after you've had vocal surgery. I promise you. Isn't he wonderful? Isn't he beautiful? All right. Can, well, let's lift one more. Come on. Thank you. Y'all all have problems. <laughs> Isn't he beautiful? Yes. Oh gosh. All right. You guys can go back to your seats. Can we welcome Kaylee? Come on. Can we thank our worship team? My word. Thank you, Kaylee. Love you. Thank you. I just want to read a psalm after that because I just can't stop. Like, I'm bubbling up inside. <laughs> I had this whole plan of, like, talking about renewing your mind, and the Lord said, just sing a song and say some psalms. <laughs> That's what we're going to do. <laughs> um, the joy that I have to receive the offering and the honor that I have, I just want to say that we are in His presence right now. And it's an honor to give in His presence. He is alive I mean, it's quite apparent. Like, aren't you feeling so free? Like, don't you feel so happy? Okay, <laughs> it's not just me. All right, so Psalm 16. Preserve me, O God, for in you I put my trust. O oh, my soul, you have said to the Lord, you are my Lord. My goodness is nothing apart from you. As for the saints who are on the earth, they are the excellent ones in whom is all my delight. Their sorrows shall be multiplied who hasten after another God. Their drink offering of blood I will not offer, nor take up their names on my lips. O oh Lord, you are the portion of my inheritance and my cup. You maintain my lot. The lines have fallen to me in pleasant places. Yes, I have a good inheritance. I will bless the Lord who has given me counsel. My heart also instructs me in the night seasons. I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. Therefore, my heart is glad and my glory rejoices. My flesh also will rest in hope for you will not leave my soul in Sheol, nor will you allow your Holy One to see corruption. You will show me the path of life in your presence is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. That's our Jesus. I don't have to expound on that. That's, that's his words. And you can take that and you can believe it and you can say it and stir up your faith with it. And, and you can give to a God that cares. You can give to a God that will never leave you, but he fills you when you come to him. So you can give when you know he's just going to fill you right back up. <laughs> Amen. So let's pray. Lord, I just thank you so much for your faithfulness. We love you, Jesus. Come and move even more. We give you the night. It's yours. I ask that you would bless every giver here, that this would be worship unto you, that we would give in faith, Lord, knowing that you are so good and you have a great plan, Lord. And we just partner with that. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. There's a couple ways you can give. If you need an envelope, 
you can raise your hand and an usher will bring you one. Or if you want to give on the number on the screen, if you're online or in the room, you can do so. Thank you.
that stuff now. We will never come down. Steph lacks passion, doesn't she? Oh, gosh. Thank you, Lord. Can we pray? Jesus, thank you for your amazing touch and your presence that is life to us and for the plans you have for this evening. You planned it, Lord, before the ages that you would change lives tonight. And so help us yield and surrender and do the best we can. And the wind of the Spirit blow and reveal Jesus to us. And that's our prayer, that we would see him, that the eyes of our heart would be stuck staring at him and that we'd burn with holy fire until the day you take us home. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Can we give the Lord praise just one more time? Thank you, Lord. Um, I've been commissioned to share some announcements. You know how I love those. Uh, Jesus 23 is right around the corner. I'm really excited about it. And the thousands will uh, descend on the convention center the theme this year is the Lamb of God. Isn't that beautiful? And um, if you want to register, you can scan that QR code if you're watching right now and you'd like to come. It'd be an honor to have you. Uh, I don't even really remember everyone who's coming, but could we put up, I, I, just so you guys have an idea as to who's coming. Yeah, it's going to be a great group. Um, yeah, just, just get there. It's going to be really special. If you've never been in a session with Brother Yoon, then uh, there's literally nothing like it. And uh, the joy of having these people around in church that week, the following weekend, it's just incredible, or that weekend, I should say. So it's a special weekend. It'd be an honor to have you guys. You can register. And that being said, we are having a kids uh, deal for Jesus 23. I'll be running the, the children's, uh, what is it called? Kids what? I know that. I know it's Jesus. Well, kids department or kids experience. Or I'll be running that. Right, Esther? Actually, Esther will be. Why don't you stand, Esther, so they can. Yeah. <laughs> it's totally deserved. Uh, Esther, our, that, our children's department is literally leading us and they see more miracles and more moves of the spirit in that children's department than, than we do and it's true and uh, I have so enjoyed my time when we go back there I've had the joy of teaching back there a couple of times I need to do it again but it's incredible what the Lord is doing with our kids and we wanted to open that up for the thousands who will come from around the world and I think we did that for Jesus 19 and man, did the kids get touched. And they really provoked the adults to worship properly, <laughs> to be honest with you. And uh, yeah, so we're offering that again. Our team will be leading that. And um, so if you want to bring your kids, bring them. Let them get marked by the presence of the Lord. I'll never forget being in Charlotte once with Bill. And Bill, <laughs> the kids took these little flags and started marching around the the sanctuary, and I was kind of getting used to the room. Bill was already pretty used to it. I was a little freaked out. And, uh, <laughs> and the kids were worshiping, and then they started this little, like, marching line, and they kept passing us. You remember that? And Bill whispered, he goes, we should be following them. I never forgot it. What a lesson it was. So may our kids be branded, and I believe they will be. Amen? Amen. Okay, anything else? Oh, something very important. This morning, we celebrated uh, Vision Sunday. How many of you were not here this morning? Okay, would you just lift your hands if you weren't here? Just so I have an idea. All right. We, uh, obviously, we've broken ground on our new building that is such a blessing. And uh, we are asking all of you to take one of these cards home. They should be on the, on the seat back. Should be right in front of you. And... We're asking that the church and our, as families that we would take these home over the next few weeks and seek the Lord together as families regarding what we will sow. 
This is not about bricks and mortar, but as you can imagine, um, first of all, I also want to just thank our teams. The setup, the teardown. Jesus School meets in a completely different facility. I'm so thankful to be here, the building that my father-in-law built and that I got saved and healed in. And Claudio Friesen got filled with the Spirit right behind that curtain. And then you name it, they came through here and ministered. Oral Roberts preached at this pulpit. Reinhard Bonnke preached at this pulpit. So many wonderful friends of God. As grateful as we are and as right as this seems, we know that there's a measure of glory that will come when we move into that new building. Those are the words that have been given to us. And it's not about the bricks and mortar. It's about the presence of God that will fill the gathering. And it's about the people who will be burning for Jesus, who will be going out and coming in. It is never, please hear me, never a waste of time to worship Jesus. Even with our missional callings and our mandates, if we are too missional to worship, we have missed the point. Worship is absolutely a privilege, and it is the holy privilege of the saints in the age to come. Missionaries go where worship isn't happening. Worship is not just for the little Marys. And by the way, and I love the gospel, and I preach the gospel, and we hold mass events, but Jesus said, wherever the gospel's preached, Mary needs to be talked about. That means something. When you pour your oil out, it means something. And the Lord has promised to live with people who worship. He inhabits our praise. The praise becomes his home. And so this building will help serve the Lord's plans for the generations to come. And so I'm asking you to just take this card. You'll go home. We actually, why don't we run that video? Yeah. Uh, I actually got my kids to be in a video. That's like parting the Red Sea. <laughs> so let, let's run that video. We believe that the nations will descend on this land. That the sick will be healed here. That the lost will be saved here. That the presence of the glory of God will rest here. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down. That the mountains might shake at your presence. That the gospel will go forth from here. Shaking the earth for the glory of God. That the presence of Jesus Christ would dwell among us. Here we will enter into the peace of your presence. Here we will remain. Jesus said, remain in me and I in you. Here we will remain. This is holy ground. Where only one thing is needed, Jesus. May Jesus be pleased with all that takes place here. May he be adored and worshiped here. May his word be taught in clarity and love here as we tell the generations to come the praises of the Lord and His strength and His wonderful works He has done. May the generations come to find Him here. To find Jesus here. Here. Together we will build the house of God. And a home for His people. Yeah, come on. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, thank you, Jesus. Yeah. So this will be a house for our children and their children and their children and their children. And if we ever, as I said before, if, if I'm in heaven and I found out that it became a place that's embarrassed of the word of God and the power and presence of the Spirit, I'm asking the Lord to send me back and harass them as a cloud of witness experience. <laughs> May it always be a place charged with the glory of God. It already is. When you step foot on the property, it is holy ground. I, I don't know how else to explain it. Leaders have already come through. We have a retreat home on the land where many leaders stay. It's about, uh, I don't know, they've got acres in it, 20-something acres to walk. There's a six-acre pond. That cross is a place where people sit. Jeremy was with us a few days ago, and... Um, we were having dinner there and we lost him for a moment and I said, where'd Jer go? Um, <laughs> he's, he's a very spiritual man, <laughs> as you know. And so Riddle just like walked out and I, I couldn't find him. I looked, he's just sitting out at the cross because 
it's the size that most people, most historians would say is pretty close to the size of the cross the Lord died on, which would have been about 13 feet tall, eight and a half feet wide. And it says right in front of the cross, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. And it was so wonderful to see a friend that I love so much just staring at the cross being touched. Christy Brent, who's the founder of Circuit Riders, uh, along with her husband, Brian, she stayed there for a few days and we have these Adirondack chairs that are around the cross with a little rose garden in front of the cross. And she sat out there. I was bass fishing. <laughs> I pulled my pickup and I started catching bass. And I looked, I saw Christy. I was trying not to disturb her while I was fishing. We know who the spiritual one was in that situation. <laughs> but I saw her and she got touched by the Lord so deeply by the cross. And so... And that's many, many wonderful friends of God have been through there. Brother Yoon's been through there. I think Claudio's been there. Um, it's really sacred and holy. And I can't wait to minister the Lord together as a church family on that land that I know he's given us. Amen. It's also where we write our songs, a lot of them, and worship the Lord. We've had two 24-hour prayer vigils there. And... Um, the, the one group who goes in that last three hours gets to see the sun come up and it gets so charged with God's presence. I can't wait to do that every single day, especially when the Bethany house is done and there's a place to pray there. I remember when we moved to Reading for a year, uh, Jess, Jess was suffering with her insomnia and, and heart issues and she had like an arrhythmia and wasn't sleeping much for years. And my real spiritual mentor, Joy Dawson, she said to me, sweetie, there's only one place I know to send you. This would have been 2016. She said, you need to go to that, in her little New Zealand Kiwi accent, she said, go to that little Holy Spirit hospital up in the mountains in Northern California. And I said, Bethel? She said, yeah. And I thought, what do you mean go? She's like, move. And I said, okay, you know, we had our ministry here. And uh, Bill had just been in the hospital. He had a, a surgery in his intestine. And he, she says, call Bill, tell him you need help. And I said, I'm not calling him, he's recovering. She said, call him. And you, with joy, it was not a democratic relationship. It was the word of the Lord. And if you didn't do it, you were basically in sin. <laughs> and I saw Bill salute her once, that was amazing. <laughs> And um, so I called him and he said, well, how soon can you get here? I think it was a Friday. I said, he said, can you get here by Tuesday? I said, sure. So I flew there and I'm saying this because I heard of so many people this morning who've moved here and it's, it's an honor. It's a, uh, it's a dream come true for me. I just want you to know it's not, it's not something we take lightly. I know people who've sold everything to come to be in his presence and it's, I know what that's like. I know the feeling of moving everything to be with the Lord. And so I just wanna honestly thank you guys for trusting us. So much, so much of our staff has moved in from all over and Bible school students who, some sold everything but, but their coffee makers. Or, yeah. <laughs> it's like you'll let go of your car but not your coffee. <laughs> and um, so I, I called Bill and we, we moved and Jesse, uh, some of the pastors there wanted to minister to her and I remember dropping her off and uh, you know, I wanted to be the guy who was like in on her sessions. They're like, bye, beat it buddy, we got this. Which was a little, it was a rough feeling, you know? So I was like, well, where am I gonna go? So I went to the prayer house and I just laid in there. And God began to speak to me about her future and our future and that all would be well. Our first night, we slept at a little Fairfield Inn off of a little road up there called Caterpillar. <laughs> yeah, super beautiful sounding, <laughs> Caterpillar. And, uh, I had a dream and in the dream I saw a beautiful structure that the Lord would build. And that night, that night, Jessica slept for eight hours for the first time 
and now she can sleep. I mean, that girl hasn't stopped sleeping. I mean, the girl can sleep. She never stopped. I'm not joking. She was completely healed, completely healed of that insomnia. Thank you, Lord. And um, so I know uh, it's worth it. It's worth it to go where he is. Of course, he's everywhere. But he manifests in certain places. And we're honored to just be here in the room and honored to host you. How many of you came in from a different city just to be in the room tonight? Would you lift your hands? Wow. What an honor. Would you keep them up? Would you keep them up high? What an honor to have you. How many of you came from a different state? Different state, okay, different nation. Where did you come from? Anybody from a different nation? Yes, where did you come from? Singapore. Singapore, welcome. What an honor to have you. Anybody else? Anybody in the balcony from a different nation? You came to be here in the room. Yes, I don't know where I'm, yeah. Where did you come from? Brazil, Brazil. welcome. Honor to have you here. What a privilege. Yep, yes, yes, there in the back. Where? Oh, I thought she said New York. I was like, amen. <laughs> amen. Different nation. Yes, you there in the back? India. India. India, welcome, welcome. What an honor to have you. Okay, well, that being said, I, I, I want us to take this really seriously. It's holy. Our finances belong to the Lord. So here's what I'm asking you to do. Take this home. Seek the Lord together as, as families as whatever, as friends, seek the Lord. Don't just throw this thing out. Put it in your Bible, put it up on your, 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 fridge, your refrigerator, something, and really take it before the Lord. Jessica and I sought the Lord. He gave us an amount to give, and we wanna do it together with you, and we will give on November the 5th. Okay, that's when we will bring our offering to the Lord. Amen? Okay, anything else, Carla? Oh. <laughs> we have quite a wild life. We leave tomorrow for our tour on the West Coast. So can I have the team come up who's coming on the Jesus tour? We stop in Sacramento and then Reading. We'll end the, the tour at Bethel on Friday night. And then, yes, we are kicking the tour back up again in January, back on the West Coast. We're going to invest. Yeah, yeah. Give the Lord praise. So... This is not, um, this is a, wor of course we worship. It's not an album tour. Uh, it's, this is a Jesus tour. We worship until the Lord comes, preach the gospel. People are lining up in Orange County. They started lining up at 10 a.m. for 7 p.m. services. And that has been happening. It happened in Pasadena. It happened in San Diego. I think we could have registered 5,000 people had we had the space in San Diego. They are coming because they're hungry. The miracles are insane. And people are sprinting to get saved the moment the, the, the invitation is given. We are witnessing a move of God. And I'm, I'm saying this in the fear of the Lord. I have not been a part of anything. Uh, I had the joy of helping start the send. I still do serve the send. I've had the joy of traveling with my father-in-law. The only thing I've been a part of that is remotely similar as far as the presence of God that is charging a region is probably the crusades that Jessica's dad hosted in the 90s and early 2000s. It's palpable, and the leaders in Orange County are, are telling us this is not normal. I mean, real incredible encounters with God for the masses. So I'm gonna ask you all to stand as we just stretch our hands toward the team. I want them to go forth with a blessing, and um, I need someone who can call some Call some, actually, Nathan and Kathleen, why don't you come? I'm going to ask you all to lead. Let's, let's, uh, let's speak a blessing over them, that the Lord would anoint us afresh, and that there'd be no delays in our layovers, all that good stuff. Just bless them, would you? Come on. Father, you, you are all that's needed, God. Tonight, you send them forth, God. Father, instruments, instruments, God, that you have anointed, that you have put songs in, that you have put servanthood in, God. Father, we are thankful that we 
Father, that this team gets to be a part of what you're doing. God, you love the people of Orange County, both of them. Father, in so much that you would send people across the country to, to instill your love in them, to show the love, to sing the songs, God. And so tonight, God, I bless this team. Protect it. But Lord God, anoint it. Every person from the cameraman to the singer to Mike, Pastor Michael and Jessica, Pastor Jessica, Father, we ask you to just anoint them to bring your gospel in Jesus' name. Amen. Why don't you pray, Kathleen? Thank yes. you, Father. Lord, we just thank you. Lord, I ask that you would fill this team with a fresh touch of your, your Holy Spirit, Lord. Father, I pray that you would ignite a fire in their souls, Lord God, that would catch in Northern California, Father, that you would set Northern California ablaze with the power of your Holy Spirit. Father, we thank you for everything that you are doing in California. We thank you that we get to be a part of it, Lord. We ask your blessings upon them and your Holy Spirit to go with them. In Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, thank you for a fresh anointing. Yes. Shake Sacramento. Yes. Shake Reading. Yes. Let your glory come yes. and use this team for your name's sake. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Can we thank the Lord? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. We won't go long tonight. Just take a seat for a moment, if you don't mind. When they announced it in Reading, they asked us to basically not announce it, right? The people were flying in from all over. The Lord's not done with America. Not done with America. The Lord, speak to us. And touch us for your glory. Amen. I was on a friend's uh, podcast the other day, and he, he asked me, what is the Lord speaking uh, to the church and to the world? Um, the Lord is saying the same thing to the church and to the world. He's saying Jesus. That's all he's ever spoken. Thank you. I got one guy with me. Thank you, Jesus. Tonight I, I felt like the Lord wanted to remind us of our personal beginnings. Not just our corporate beginning, which is obviously special to us as a church family, how we started in that little Presbyterian church just singing until he came yeah. with no pressure, no clock. Aren't you glad the clock did not die on the cross? Yeah. Yeah, I'll never forget Heidi saying, oil takes time, sweetie, and so does wine. That's just the truth. But I want to talk about just our personal beginnings, how it all started for you, for me where it started, how it started. Andrew Murray said, uh, if you're looking for your end, you'll find it in your beginning. Yeah. I've never really been into open and closed doors. I, I believe in them, but I used to hear people say, it's, he opens and closes doors, but it's hell in the hallway. And I thought, well, why does that have to be hell in the hallway if I'm walking with Jesus? It could be heaven in the hallway. It was actually uh, Jay Valentin who asked, asked me that question last week. What is the Lord saying? And he's saying Jesus. The Lord, hear, hear me. He is 
specifying and sharpening the message of the church. He is specifying and sharpening the message of the church. I don't, I found it to be interesting that Lauren Cunningham goes to glory, who was a dear friend and the father of something that the world has never really seen. And then the next day, what happens in Israel takes place. It's proof, that, you know, God doesn't take his generals home uh, by happenstance. And then Israel is this time clock, this timepiece for the whole world. And Jesse actually said last night as we talked about it, should we have Vision Sunday tomorrow with what's going on in Israel? Would that sound numb or deaf or tone deaf? I said, absolutely we should. More than ever, Jesus needs to be preached all over the world. And this is proof of it. The only one who will solve what's going on over there is King Jesus. Every generation, another five-year-old sees something bombed that is ingrained in his soul. And that doesn't just go away. You understand? That doesn't just leave you, regardless of what side you may be born into. You are marked, and this stuff goes on for generations. And as hard as we try, we need to realize this thing will continue generation after generation after generation until a greater king than David, who is the son of David, comes on the scene. The, there is no replacing the gospel. And the gospel is quite simply Jesus himself preached by the power of the Holy Spirit. Period. As much as I believe in signs and wonders, and we've seen them here by the thousands, there's stuff that's happened here that I didn't even agree with. And then it happened and I agreed with it. <laughs> it's amazing how that works. It's heretical until it happens to you. And then you've got to figure it out. I remember my, some people would pray and their hands would shake and they used to bother me so bad. And then I went to a meeting in Orlando where Bill and Randy were speaking and Randy took a step toward me and my hands started shaking. So I tried to hide them in my pocket. <laughs> really. And I didn't know Bill at the time very well. I, we'd met twice. He was sitting next to me and my, my hands were doing this. And I thought, this is worse. I might as well just let him out. And he just kind of looked over and, you know. I, I'm in. I have seen stuff that I never thought I'd see. Stuff that stretches you. Stuff that offends your balanced thinking, which is really oftentimes dead thinking. Where many people are more comfortable with a savior who didn't come out of the grave. Because they can control that version of him. So I'm in. I've seen tumors fly out of people's mouths on the floor in front of me. I felt dozens disappear under my hand. I'm in, I, I believe, but I wanna say something. In some supernatural environments, we have forgotten Jesus. And that, that is not a small issue. The thousands who came to the pastor's conference, there was no secret sauce. The secret sauce was him. So this is not a small issue to lose our vision of Jesus. There is no faith called the Christian faith without Jesus. And so when Jay asked me that question, the answer was quite simple. The Father is speaking Jesus. It's all he's ever spoken. And, and he's, it's all he's ever spoken prior to the incarnation. Your Bible is about Jesus. Because Jesus said that. The scriptures testify of me, he said. They speak of me, but you won't come to me. And that's why I tell our students, don't just come to your Bible. Come to Jesus through your Bible. At the same time, don't create a Jesus that isn't in the Bible. Prayer, friends, is about Jesus. In fact, you're not really praying until you forget you are. Until you forget about it all. Until he, the, the, the light that shines from his face dissolves every other thought. If you've ever been in the glory of Jesus, you know what I'm talking about. It cancels every other awareness. 
And I, I'm, one of the things I'm concerned about, but I'm hopeful, is that a generation of young people is coming up in the church who's never been in the glory. And once you are, you, there's, no way, there's no way home from there. There's no way home. Worship is about Jesus. Are you listening tonight? Worship is about Jesus. Worship is not about music, though he likes it. Aren't you grateful? I don't know why the Lord enjoys a change of key or a certain melody or why he has chosen to live in praise that is united. There's something about the sound of the saints that will, listen church, listen to me, that will forever carry us further and deeper for longer than the voice of somebody. I could go down that road. I, I, I am jealous over our worship environment. And I don't apologize for it. Because worship is about him. It's just about him. And we don't know we're really worshiping until we, I should say, we're not really worshiping until we forget we are. There's this loss of self, this loss of thought that is us-centered. We get lost in his presence, and finally we're worshiping. Prayer, as I said earlier, is simply about the Lord. It's all about Jesus. Church should be about Jesus. Is anyone listening? Church should be about Jesus Christ. Here's a newsflash. It's his house. <laughs> he said, no, it's mine. No, you're adopted, and you got invited in. It's his house. His name is on the title deed. And he didn't buy it with a mortgage. He bought it with his blood. That's what Peter wrote, that we've been purchased by the blood of the Son of God. Say, the church is his. So hold on, Michael, you're saying everything is his. Yes, that's what I'm saying. So the message to the world is this, Jesus. The message to the church is this, Jesus. The message to the believer is Jesus. The message to the unbeliever is Jesus. The message to the backslider is Jesus. The message to the person who's lacking power is Jesus. The message to the person who is lonely is Jesus. There is no other remedy than Jesus himself. That is all God has to offer. And friends, when you realize who Jesus is, you will realize that he has offered everything in his son. There's nothing left over. Not that you want, at least. But the specificity I, I, I just want to get to here. In fact, I, I talked about it today. I hope Smith was running a camera on me. I have to do, I had to do all these videos after service. And, uh, I had to talk about, or I think I was asked to send a video to some friends who have a ministry school. And their third years wanted a video. And they asked me to talk about the servant king I want you to hear these words. Listen to this from Zechariah. You don't need to turn there. Your king cometh unto you lowly. Your king cometh unto you lowly. Riding on a donkey. So if you want to know how the Lord comes, he comes lowly. Even if he comes with might and power, which he does, he does not forfeit his lowliness. Right? Jesus is the perfect definition of the Father. The perfect one. So the Lord Jesus comes to tell us who God is. He is fully God. So here's the question. 
How does he arrive? Lowly. Lowly. There's a big difference, listen, between a cross that kills you and a ladder you climb. I have seen so many people become offended in the church because somebody else did not give them what they felt like they deserved. And the Bible says, the Bible says, that promotion cometh from above and that man cannot receive anything that heaven doesn't give. Oh, friends, listen, I'm begging you guys, our media team, our worship team, songwriters, the House of Bethany group, our musicians, uh, the, the directors, all, all of it, listen to me. If you've got to climb a ladder to get it, you will have to fight to stay on that ladder and it will contaminate the soul. It's not worth it, it's not worth it, it's not worth it. The king comes lowly. Now friends, this has defined greatness. And this is why Israel missed Jesus, because he was not their version of greatness. They wanted a warrior who in the flesh would set them free. But Jesus redefined greatness. Greatness is Calvary, according to the Lord. Is this making sense? That's why there's a lamb on the throne. So Jesus comes this way, not merely to do something, but to reveal who he really is. The humility of Christ Jesus is greatness. And so that's what I sent the third years. I was actually to, to BSSM. I had to record it today. That's what I sent them. Tell me about the servant king. This isn't just something the Lord accomplished, but this is who he is. He also redefined kingdom. Kingdom is not about volume. In fact, he didn't even quench a smoking flax or bruise a reed. A humble heart will take us further than the loudest voice. If I'm going, I want my eyes to fill with tears like they used to when I first started. I want to weep when I used, the, the same way I used to weep. I, want, I don't want to not be triggered like I used to. Anyone remember listening to the same worship song over and over and over and over and over and over again? Anybody remember weeping over their Bible? Has anyone ever been on their face in their prayer closet or in a room and your actual flesh begins to cry out for the living God so much so that you don't have any words. That's what Madame Guyon said. We are quiet for two reasons in God's presence. One, we have too little to say or two, because we have too much to say. Have you ever been in, in the Lord's presence to such a degree that your being is crying out his holy name? So Jesus has defined what success looks like. And, and, and we, if we're going to make it until the end, church, if we're going to make it as a church family, we've got to know what the win is. And for those of you who came in from out of town, you need to know. That's why the Lord sent you here tonight. Yes, to be in his presence in worship. Yes, to get touched. Yes, to get healed unapologetically. Yes, to give your life to Jesus. But you must leave tonight knowing that God sent you here to hear his holy word. The Father is showing us who his son is. And before he is a water walker, listen to me, he is the lamb who comes to die. If we lose that, if we lose the tree, then water walking becomes about us. Does this making any sense? If you lose Calvary, you'll start hosting events on how to walk on water. 
And that's what we do. That's our default. We do this. I don't know why we do it. But Jesus multiplies bread and fish. Imagine if his, his disciples said, hey, Lord, we should host a conference on food multiplication. We'll pack that thing out. But we've done that. There's power. Listen, there's power in the tree. And I've told you this many times. The cross is not a mere accomplishment. It is the greatest definition of who our God is. We serve a God who comes to die for his harlot bride. This is who he is. This is what keeps the soul. This will keep you to the end. And I want to see all of you at the throne. Well, maybe not all of you. No, I'm joking. <laughs> I was like, oh, fear of the Lord. <laughs> it's been a wonderful journey, but in the age to come, maybe. But I don't know. No, I'm joking. <laughs> I hope you're not near my mansion, Carla. You'll be sending spreadsheets. <laughs> Carla will give us a to-do list in glory. Go mow Peter's lawn. She sent her husband to the grocery store with a spreadsheet. <laughs> Poor guy. <laughs> Color coded too. So when I say the Lord is speaking Jesus, I want to be very clear about the Jesus that he's speaking. Because there's only one. I've read this to you so many times, but I just don't see it as a waste. 1 Corinthians 2, verse 1, And I, brethren, when I came to you, did not come with excellence of speech or of wisdom, declaring to you the testimony of God. How free can I be tonight? All right, it is live, though. <laughs> like, once it gets out there, it's, it's out there. Let me say it, Lord, that's in a way that's sneaky. <laughs> it, Paul is saying here, I didn't come with excellent speech. Yet we teach excellent speech. Yeah. And I'm not saying if you have it, it's wrong. But Paul's like, you know what? I threw it all away. And Paul had excellent speech. He memorized Torah. He's trained by Gamaliel. He's a philosopher. Spoke multiple languages. We're not talking about an idiot. We're talking about a very smart guy who said, I didn't show up that way. He didn't show up that way because he was addicted. Because he saw the God of the Torah who redeemed him when he was out murdering this God's bride. And so Paul throws all of that away. All right, I'm just going to say it, and I'm saying it in love. We are hosting events teaching people how to, com not we, but events are held teaching preachers how to communicate. Right? From the worship perspective, we teach, we can teach, we shouldn't, but we can and often do teach people who aren't in love how to write. Too much tonight? This is our, my home church, so. <laughs> I gotta do it somewhere. But if you write and you're not in love, and you're an employee, and you just write a song that you didn't get from glory, <laughs> not realizing the only songs that work here are the ones they're singing up there. That's why they work here. You know, they are worshiping up there. <laughs> That's why we worship here. There aren't two services going on when you're in the spirit. You just join the one that's going on around the throne. And as I've said before, 
The, Re- the book of Revelation says they were singing the song of the Lamb, listen, and Moses' song. That's when you know you've written something good. Why were they singing it? It was from heaven. And that's why you, we wait and worship the way we wait because we're not moving on until we're aware of him. If we are not, we, we have missed the only biblical proof that he liked it. Biblically, the only way we know the Lord liked the worship is if he came. Biblically, that'd be refreshing. Just, let's just be biblical. The only way they knew that the Lord liked it was with fire and a cloud. That was it. You say we're in the New Testament. Well, look at the day of Pentecost. They were anointed by the Spirit in the same room that they celebrated the Last Supper. That's why we sing of the blood, because blood always comes before fire. Blood always comes before oil. You forget Calvary, I'm telling you. You will forfeit the presence of God. Calvary is not, once again, something he did. Calvary is a revelation of who he is. We need people in love who are writing music. We need people who are in love preaching the gospel. Why would I teach someone to communicate who doesn't communicate Christ? Once you're in love, I'll help you out. I've never preached a three-point sermon in my life. I don't even know how to do it. I mean, I guess they're all right. I don't see that in the text. I don't see that in Jesus. So Paul says here, I have determined to know nothing. In other words, I am trying, listen to the words of Paul. I am doing my best to forget everything I ever knew. Is that, that's not natural from a human perspective. What's natural from a human perspective is to try your best to know a bunch more. But Paul is saying, I've discovered something about this God who has manifested himself through death, burial, and resurrection. He is not adding to me. He's reducing from me. That's what God is in the business of. That's what the cross, the beauty of Christ crucified does is he whittles you away so that you can have what? Him. And then you get everything. Does this make sense? So much of us, we want more, Lord, more, more. I know, I get it. We'll do it tonight. I get it. But Paul is saying here, I have tried my best to forget everything I ever knew. So I literally showed up to you, listen, empty. Or like Miss Kuhlman used to say, I died a thousand deaths before every service. And then she'd take the platform and talk about her dad and how she was too skinny and didn't didn't think she was pretty and that she had long skinny fingers and used to eat biscuits and and butter and sleep in a barn when she first, and I, used to, I would watch that and go, what is she talking about? Now I get it. She's just emptying herself out. She's getting Catherine out of the way. That's the work of the cross. Some of you feel like, man, I've been hidden. Nobody sees me. I'm in the shadows. It's a wonderful place to be. It's where the trusted, loving, glorious scalpel of the Holy Spirit begins to whittle you away. It's wonderful. It's wonderful. Don't press into leadership. Press into Jesus. You know, I, I, I'm telling you, if we, I, I can just tell you this. The songs that came to this house that are the least watched have the most glory. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, there's one where God literally stormed the room, and I've never heard worship and praise like that in my life. And it's nowhere near some of the videos with millions and millions of views. It just shows us the church needs a taste bud adjustment. It's got to move beyond videography, a great mix on broadcast, a great mix in the house. It's got to move beyond that. That's all very valuable. There is an anointing for all that, and I'm grateful for every, every one of you, every tech 
Every technician, everyone who's mixing, Zach, I love you. You know it's not even about you, okay? I, I get that, but it's got to go beyond that. And you know the moments I'm talking about. What's that one called? The king is, welcome the king. A glorious moment. Listen, people's eyeballs are not the barometer. His coming is. His response is. The moment we become addicted to, to him and his response, we let him have his work in us. We need to die to all that. If God raises us up as leaders, great. It's wonderful. But I can tell you this. It'll be one of the hardest things you've ever had to do. There's a death to die and multiple every day. It's a privilege, but don't think for a moment that it's easy. Oftentimes we press into something not knowing what it cost. And the work of the Spirit is what prepares us. Just settle in. Make his presence your ministry. Is this tracking tonight? I'll never forget Jesse's, Jesse's dad. He, said, he had me at one of the events in Orlando in 2009. And Jesus' image was just a dream in my heart. I, we didn't have a, I don't even think we owned a laptop. And he announces to a crusade here in the city with 18,000 people there, I think. Mikey, come up here and tell the people about your new ministry. I was like, I don't, I don't have an office. And he goes, well, tell them about your ministry. And I'll never forget what jumped out of my mouth. My ministry is him. And then someone said, tell them more. I said, no, that's all I've got. Him, him, him. I used to have a lot more. I used to have a lot to say. I used to have topics coming out of my ears because I was filled with myself. And then he takes you off the backside of some desert called I-4. <laughs> takes you to Sheol. <laughs> the pit called Orlando Traffic. I never wanted to live here. Gosh, this is really a risky sermon. Well, I, I never did. It, I never did. I, I loved the water. I grew up fishing. I don't love the summers. I hate traffic. I am not a city boy. And I went all over Florida. I am a Florida boy. And I went all over Florida. I tried Sarasota, West Palm, Tampa Bay. You name it. Went out to the country. We didn't lie. Everywhere. And then finally we stayed here. And to my shock and torture, I felt the peace of God. I'm not joking. This is not, I would rather mow your lawn than go to Disney. Uh, that's just me. I'm not saying like, and it's, this isn't like a political thing. It's just the lines, the heat, the no deodorant, all of it. I'm like, oh, what am I doing? And now, now, why are we doing this again? One time my daughter, she loves it there. So of course I, if she asked for it, we do it. And it was her birthday. And uh, it was torture. Like an hour in, I'm like, I'm not going to survive it. <laughs> I've been to Sudan. I've been all over the Middle East. <laughs> this is worse, Lord. <laughs> they put me in an area where there are militants. I can, but this is something else. And I actually said to the Lord, oh, uh, is Sophia here tonight? Okay. <laughs> I, said, I said, Lord, <laughs> send the rain. Please rain this thing out, and I'll, I'll buy her something after this. I'll, I'll make it up. Sure enough, it started storming. <laughs> storming. And she comes up. She's like, bye-bye. It's rain. It's going to rain. I go, I know. I can't believe it. You know? <laughs> and we left. It was awesome. <laughs> it was great. She's like weeping, and I'm walking with her. I'm like, oh, you'll be okay. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> but we came here. And, and that's another thing I just want to say. We don't choose where we live. <laughs> Clearly. No, 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 this is important. Listen. You died. No, I'm serious. You died. We don't choose where we live based on what's most expensive or most convenient or who has the coolest coffee shop. Or who, what little streets or 
cobblestone and have little vines growing up the wall and make you feel all eclectic. And people move places or it has a nice, wet, like weather. That's not what the saints do. The saints are the dying ones. I was preaching in, in uh, Nashville once and he Heidi was there. It was always very intimidating when Heidi's watching you preach. And I said, I think I'm done traveling for a while because the church just got planted. She pulled me aside in the back. She goes, don't you ever say that again. I said, okay, what did I do? She said, you don't have the right to tell the Lord well, you're, where you'll go and what you'll do. You're dead. It marked me. I thought I was doing the pastoral balance thing because I had been traveling my whole life. She goes, no, 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 you, you don't get a vote. You don't get a vote. We don't choose where we're going to go based on anything but the Lord's voice and word. I think it was uh, Chris uh, Valentin who said to us, Jesse and I once, you will find your destiny where you find your place and your people. Your place and your people. You put those two together, destiny comes forth. But I can't tell you how many people have, have been uprooted from the wind of the Spirit that will carry them further than they could have ever carried themselves because they chose locations. I'm speaking this by the Spirit. I don't even know why I'm saying it. Because they chose locations that God did not lead them to with the eyes of the flesh. It's not about the mall. It's not about the coffee. It's not about the look. It's not about the feel. It's about His voice. It's the, at the end of the day, he is where his voice is. When I asked Dave Papavisi, when he moved to Iraq, I said, you could die, you know that. Pop, uh, uh, ISIS was going through. He's been there 10 years now. I said, bro, you could die. And if he's my friend, so of course, I didn't want to lose him. And the Lord has protected him, thank God. But he said, bro, I signed that check a long time ago. And then he told me this. I never forgot it. He said, I'm not going to Iraq to reach Muslims. I said, what? That's exactly what you're doing. He said, no, I'm going to Iraq because that's where I'm going to walk with Jesus. I'll walk with him there in a way that I just can't walk with him here because he's called me there to be with him. And that's how Paul showed up. Empty I have purpose to know nothing. And what I want for us, listen, is regardless of the request, I want this church to have one answer, Jesus. I want us to be the ones who are that crazy to believe that Jesus, who is all in all and has filled all things with himself, is actually enough for every need under the heavens. I, I want... I want when somebody comes to you with a substance abuse issue, I want you to turn them to Jesus. If they come to you with a marriage issue, I want you to turn them to Jesus. If they come to you with a sickness in their body, turn them to Jesus. If their heart's not burning, turn them to the baptizer. If they feel alone, turn them to the shepherd. If they're bound with devils, turn them to the warrior. If they're prideful, turn them to the lamb. Turn them to Jesus every single time. I want us to have one answer, just one. I want our songs to be about Jesus. I want us to write songs to him that come from him, that are empowered by him, and are all about him. Did you hear that? I want them to be to him, about him, from him, and by him. I want his glory on them. I want his spirit to empower them. I want him to be the topic of this house until we are in glory with him. I came to you and purposed to know nothing except, listen to the word of the Lord, 1 Corinthians 2, and then I'm gonna close it down. 1 Corinthians 2. I came to you. I determined to know nothing or not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. There's one Jesus. There's one Jesus. When the ministry first started, I, I got invited to do a show in California, a TV show. And 
this pastor, he had like 15,000 people in his church. And I was in my early 30s. And he said, now son, what are you going to preach? I said, Jesus. And I wasn't trying to be like catchy or start a Jesus movement. <laughs> you know, I want one. But that wasn't the agenda. I was just hooked. You know what I'm talking about? I was just hooked on his beauty. Because there's no one like him. And so I said, Pastor, I'm going to talk about Jesus. And he said, okay, and then what? And I said, I don't know. I, I don't think I've got anything else. And he said, well, we got a problem. I'll never forget it. I said, well, what's that? He said, this show is 26 minutes long. How are you going to, this is what he said to me, pastoring 15,000 people. How are you going to fill 26 minutes by just talking? about Jesus. Now you have to understand at that time, I was <laughs> like a rabid animal. I remember actually coming to a meeting y'all did, Kim, in uh, Aliso Viejo during that time. I think Benny Perez was there preaching as well and people were getting touched and healed and you were leading. And I was locked away in that season, hungry for God. And I would, I'm not joking, go on like, three or four 40-day fasts a year. A year. I would fast everything except golf. <laughs> He's still doing a work in me. We're not quite there yet. <laughs> and I, I would go to Jesse's daddy's meetings and he could like sing Old MacDonald and 300 people would get healed. And he didn't sing Old MacDonald, thank God, but he, it felt like he could have. And here I am grinding, I'm going for it, I'm doing everything I know to do. People are coming in sick and they're leaving sick. They're coming in ready to die, many of them, they did die. People were coming in uh, unsaved and leaving unsaved. And yet I had the scriptures in front of me and I came to this place in my life where I said, either the Lord, it is either the Lord's fault or mine. It can't be on him. And I looked at my life, can, can you help me Joel, just softly. I looked at my life and I said, it's not matching up with the life of Jesus. And all of us come to that place where we either choose Isaac or Ishmael. We're going to choose the son of promise, the word of the Lord, or we're going to build something on our own. Now here's the issue. If we build something on our own, we have to keep it alive. And that's how pastors fry. That's how worship leaders fry. Are, are y'all listening? That's how you fry is the machine starts steering you and you become an employee of an agenda, of an initiative, of a schedule that is Ishmael, it is a son of the flesh, it is not the son of promise. And we come to these, these forks in the road, not just one time in life, multiple times where we choose the word of the Lord or what we will bring to the table. And friends, listen, the only thing God receives is what he himself does. So I began locking myself away to be with the Lord. That's the only thing I knew to do. Because that was the common denominator that I saw in everyone I looked up to. I don't know, I don't know what moves you or who moves you. But if they're really anointed by the Lord, I guarantee you, they're going to trace you back. The roots will go back to their personal walk with Jesus. I fasted, I prayed, I locked myself away, I drove to remote places. I wanted the Lord. Year after year, I wanted the Lord. I had to find him. And I didn't know he was romancing me the whole time. And oh, the discouragement. Now I remember, I'd drive up to Reading or fly up there, whatever I had to do, or go be with, with other people who had walked with God, or go sit with Pastor Hayford. People who knew the Lord, uh, Oral Roberts and, and Pastor Rex Humbard, and Joy and... I'd sit there and just listen and listen and listen. And you know what? They told me what to do. I didn't get a vote. <laughs> I remember Joy telling me, go take a nap right now. And I'm at her house. And I'm, she goes, you won't be able to receive what I'm about to tell you unless you go take a nap. And I said, Joy, I'm like 35 years old at the time. <laughs> She's 80 something. She goes, no, darling boy, go take a nap in my lilac room. And it was all lilac. And I was like, uh... Okay, so she treated me like I was six months old. 
tucked me in, <laughs> not joking, cooked a muffin for me, said, eat this so you'll be strong. <laughs> I didn't sleep at all. I pretended I did. I, she came back on an, in an hour on the dot, opened her Bible, and then said, now wait in silence. And we waited there for an hour. And she said, what did you hear? I said, nothing. She said, do it again. These are the people we need. I'm not joking. And over that time, the Lord was minimizing me, minimizing me, so that I would determine to know nothing. I have a long way to go. I think we bring too much to the table. I think we have too many ideas. I think we have too many initiatives. Let's get back to Jesus. And only God knows the tipping point. But if you don't give up, the dam will break. Did you hear what I said? No, no, did you really? Are you really getting it? If you don't give up, if you don't stop seeking him, you will have your moment with him. Don't you throw in the towel and don't sell it. Don't sell your birthright. Don't trade it in. Don't be for sale. One glimpse of Jesus, and I don't mean just the sense of his presence. That's how it begins, and it's wonderful. Never shortchange the sense of his presence. Become addicted to the sense of his Become a master at walking with Jesus. Let that be your, your ministry is to walk with Jesus. But I'm not talking, I'm talking about him coming your way. In a way that makes you feel like he stopped everything just to come your way. Do you know that you finding him, if you seek him with all your heart, is as much a promise as John 3.16? Is anybody hearing me who came in from all over the world tonight? You did not come here to check off your Jesus image box. That would crush my heart. You came here to, to find him. To, that's who drew you. He knew you'd be in this room before you were ever born. Don't you quit. Don't you quit. He's a whisper away. Years of seeking, years of going to places, years of sitting under people, and one night, one night, one night, one night he came. He was there the whole time, but he really came. And he is beautiful. I said, he is beautiful. This is the Christian life to discover and find the nail-scarred one. This is glory, this is success, to be a friend of God. I remember one night I was in Reading, we, we had moved there and I was already going to sleep in, in my bed and I turned on, Bill was ministering. I was tired. I feel the Lord stirring some of you tonight. I was tired, I was in my bed, I turned it on and Bill was singing I will give you all my worship, a cappella. Undeniable, undeniable, I felt the Lord come. I couldn't, I couldn't deny it, and I didn't want to go. And I'm there in my bed, and the Lord says, are you hungry? I have my kids on both sides of me. And the Lord says, are you hungry? What did you move here for? Did you move here just to say you came, or did you move here to find me? I don't know why you came, why, you, why, why did you come to Jesus School? Why, why have you become part of Jesus Image Church? Why, why, why do you come to worship with us? Hopefully it's not just to say, that's where I go. Hopefully it's to find the bridegroom. I got dressed, I lived 15 minutes away from the sanctuary. By then I, I guess, you know, people knew our ministry. I could have done whatever to try to get up close to the front, but it was jam-packed and I came in from the door just like y'all do. I came in straight through the door. Bill was, was preaching and no one would let me sit next to them because it was too packed. And I'm literally going, can I sit there? Do you have a seat? No. Do you, is there room here? No. Is there room here? And I just kept, talk about awkward and vulnerable in the middle of the meeting. But the hungry don't care. They don't care. They've got to behold the one that's been pulling on their heart. They've got to have him. 
And so then Bill says, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to share the stories tonight that are offensive. Never forgot it. He goes, I want to tell you how this whole thing started. And he said, I want the young generation to know in case you think this started in another way. And I want this house to know how this started. This did not start with branding and a cool logo. It may never be all about it. It started. It started in his glory. May it forever be in his glory. May it end with a deeper glory. And I'll never forget what happened that night as they began to worship. The blessed power of the Holy Spirit just began to move through that crowd and I found a seat. And people started getting healed and touched and singing in the Spirit. The gifts of the Spirit began being poured out. I'll never forget it. Then he said, I'm going to do a, a, a prayer line. And I waited in line. And I was one of the last people. And I came through. I had a hat on. I came through. And <laughs> Bill looked at me. He goes, what are you doing here? Like, why, why, are you, why did you wait in line? Why are, you, why are you here? And I said, I'm hungry, Bill. And he goes, he gave me a nod like, I understand. I get it. I feel that the Lord is reminding you tonight of how it all started for you. And may he take you back to certain moments where he showed you himself, where the tears flowed, where you sang hour after hour after hour after hour, where you didn't care who knew you, who recognized you, where you'd go anywhere and sit with anyone who was his friend. May we never graduate from that place. The Christian life is a life of death, burial, and resurrection. With every head bowed and eye closed tonight, actually, I'm just gonna ask us all to stand. Can we do that before I close? I don't know where you are on the spectrum of your walk with Jesus. And, and, and please do, just close your eyes for a moment. I want everyone to feel safe. But what I can tell you unequivocally based on the authority of the Word of God is that you do not have to leave here bound in sin. You do not have to leave here with chains. You don't have to leave here with porn addictions, with addictions to lust, with a gossiping tongue, with envy, bitterness. You don't have to leave with any of that. You don't have to leave tonight with the same cycles that have been passed down through your family line. It can end tonight. I said it can end tonight. You can actually leave here washed, cleansed, redeemed, filled, changed. If you don't want it, you don't need to leave with it. You say, Michael, what do I do? Come to Jesus. You say, how? By faith, you reach out to him. And if you're tired of that condemning feeling that you're not good enough to be in the Lord's presence, friend, it's because you've been trying to wash away your own sin. You've been trying to set yourself free. But Jesus promised that if we come to him, he will by no means cast us away, his word says, and he will set us free. And whom the Son sets free is free indeed. You will really be free. That's for everyone under the sound of my voice who is bound by the chains and the slavery of sin. Jesus said, he who sins is a slave to it. You don't have to leave as a slave tonight. You say, Michael, I want to be free. I want you to lift your hand right now. I want to be free. Hallelujah. If you raised your hand or you wish you did, get down here now. Get down here. Don't waste any time. If you're tired of the bondage, if you're tired of that stuff, that cycle, if you're sick of it, you want to be free. You just, you, you got to, you need 
darkness to leave and you want Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Can we just begin thanking the Lord? Thank you, Jesus. This is wonderful. This is wonderful. Don't you settle. Listen, I feel the heart of God. Don't settle. Don't settle. Don't settle for darkness. I don't care if it was your father, your grandfather, or your, your, from your mother's side. It doesn't, you don't have to carry that. You can leave free tonight. Look, they're coming from all over. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Emma, can you, are you out there? Can you play your instrument? Thank you. The Lord's freeing many people tonight. It's just about Jesus. It's just about Jesus. It is just about Jesus. It is just about Jesus. It is about Jesus. And I declare his name over you tonight. The name of Jesus. The holy name of Jesus. The name above every name over you. Every knee will bow and tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. The name of Jesus over you. Thank you, Lord. This is one touch from Him. That's all you need is one touch from the Lord. Those addictions, those cycles, leave now. Those chains on your mind, be gone in Jesus' name. Those memories that plagued your heart, that the, 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 the abuse of the past, it goes in Jesus' name. May the Lord heal you. He heals, he heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. I declare that over you tonight. Be free, be free, be free, be free. Every hard heart, be broken. Come alive, soften in the name of Jesus. I want us to pray this out loud. There's no doubt the Lord's touching you in the heart, but your declaration is more powerful than you could ever believe. I want us to declare this as one church family tonight. And those of you watching around the world, declare this in your homes heavenly father I've sinned against you I know I have wash me in the holy blood of Jesus cleanse my soul set me free tonight of anything that is not from you Jesus, I come directly to you, knowing you love me, and I trust you tonight. Touch me. Touch me deeply. I believe that you died on the cross you suffered, that you bled, that you're buried and raised again. You are the Son of God. And tonight, I give you my heart the best I know how. Receive me, Lord, as I receive you. Thank you for your love. Fill me with your spirit that I would know you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Now for those of you who came forward or those who wish you did, 
I want to ask you now, just in your own words, listen, in your own words, offer your life to Jesus. It's got to be personal. Just hand it over. Thank you, Lord. Holy Spirit, come and fill them. Fill them. David, would you come up? Fill them, fill them, fill them. Fill them, fill them, fill them. With your peace and joy. Hallelujah. I thank you, Lord. Let your mercy flow. Your love flow. I want us to sing one song that I believe is for the house tonight. I need thee, oh, I need thee. And then we'll go, but I want us to sing this from the depths of our hearts. Can we? Can we just worship for a moment? I need thee, oh, I need thee. Hey. Yeah. 
It's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm coming back to the heart of worship, where it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord. When it's all about you, it's all about you, Jesus. It's all about you. It's all about. It's all about 
It's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus.
Sure. 
Jesus, we love you tonight. It is our joy and our honor to worship you, Jesus. Lord, mend every broken heart tonight, Lord. Let every weary heart, God, be uplifted in your presence, Jesus. Let it not stop as we leave here, God. Let us take it home with us, God. Let it take us with us wherever we go, Lord. I thank you, God, for restoring marriages, Lord, restoring hearts, restoring childlike wonder, Lord. Oh, Holy Spirit, show us Jesus. Make him, he, let him be our obsession, Lord. The only thing we ever want. Lord, we plead the blood of Jesus over every heart in here, Lord, tonight. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. We love you guys so much. One day when we have our building, we'll, we'll do this all night long. But if you want to stay and keep worshiping, you can. We're just going to let our team, we have an early flight in the morning, so maybe we can have some music, but we love you guys so much. We'll see you next week. We believe that the nations will descend on this land. That the sick will be healed here. That the lost will be saved here. That the presence of the glory of God will rest here. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down. That the mountains might shake at your presence. That the gospel will go forth from here. Shaking the earth for the glory of God. That the presence of Jesus Christ would dwell among us. Here we will enter into the peace of your presence. Here we will remain. Jesus said, remain in me and I in you. Here we will remain. This is holy ground. Where only one thing is needed, Jesus. May Jesus be pleased with all that takes place here. May he be adored and worshiped here. May his word be taught in clarity and love here as we tell the generations to come the praises of the Lord and His strength and His wonderful works He has done. May the generations come to find Him here. To find Jesus here. Here. Together we will build the house of God. And a home for His people.